Um, I talked about this already, but basically what it does is this function takes the first argument is the player, and the second argument is a table which contains a reference to all the other blocks in the game. So the table contains a reference to this block, to this block, this block, and so on. So there's four or five blocks in our current sample. So there's five, four or five entries in this table. And what it does is it just iterates over those entries and it says subtract using vector math the position of the block from the position of the player figure out how long that vector is that comes out of there and then store that as a field on the block. So for example this block here, the green one, is 75 pixels away. The center of this object is 75 pixels away from the center of the white object. And then when I jump, the distance gets further. So you can see that the number goes up. But this 75 is the value that it's getting stored in distance to player, or dist to player, a field. So then having iterated over each of these, you can ignore this debug code. The debug code is basically updating this little label. So we don't care about that right now. <coughs> I've calculated these distances, and then I use a custom sorting function. So if you're familiar with Lua tables, you'll know that you can create your own function to implement a custom sort. So my sort function, compare, says return the object whose distance is less than the other object. So I've got object A and object B. So as I iterate over this list with table sort, it says is object 1 closer? Does it have a smaller number than object 2? Okay. It stays in the front. No, object 2 is less. Swap those two. So then object 2 goes into object 1's position, and object... It's just like a sort of like a bubble sort. But probably not. Probably implemented much more efficiently. The point is, is that at the end of this line here, our table containing the pieces will now be sorted by nearest to furthest from the player. So then we'll return from this function, and the table that we passed in will now be sorted, and we will pass it directly into another function called calculate my gravity. Find it. So this function takes a reference to the player and the table that contains all the pieces. And then what it does is it simply says, give me the first piece in the table. Take pieces number one. If there's nothing then, if I got nothing out of there, that means there's some kind of problem with the code or the code isn't quite ready to start, it aborts. Because obviously we can't apply gravity if there's no place to apply gravity in the direction of. <clears throat> and then the next bit here, you can see this is an extremely short function. I should point out, I forgot to mention this, although um, I'm using SSK in this code, in this uh, demo, I'm doing so because I knew that I was going to be way, way too lazy to do the longhand vector calculations. But what you see here is basically like 10 lines of code, this bit right here. This would be about 50 lines of code if I had longhand calculated all this stuff out. So I'm, I'm much too lazy, so I'll explain it line by line, and then you can simply take a look at the SSK code that goes behind it. Um, up here, first of all, line 123 to 126, I have localized uh, some functions out of my Math2D library. So a vector scaling function, a function to subtract one vector from another, a function to normalize a vector, which is to take a vector and turn it into what's called a unit length one vector, so the length of the vector is one, or a unit vector whose length is one, and a vector to angle, which basically takes a vector and converts it into an angle between zero and 359.999 degrees. So. Having the object that the player is nearest to, what we want to do in practice is to calculate a force that points in the direction from the center of our object to the object we're going to be attracted to. 
Now we're not really attracted to this object. What's going on here is we are basically calculating a force and then applying it and because it points right at the object we want to be attracted to, quote unquote, air quotes, you can't see them, it's just going to push it into it. This object here is static, it's not allowed to move. Our player is dynamic and so the forces will be able to move our player in this direction. And then the physics engine says, good, I'll keep moving it until you touch it and then I will stop that movement. So let's go back to the code. First, I recalculate the distance. Um, I'm sorry, I extract the distance. So previously we calculated all the distances. So I extract the distance. And I may not even, oh, that's right. And the reason I extracted the distance is because originally what I was going to do was apply a scaled gravity. So um, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry if this is confusing, but let me stop for a minute. One thing that people need to realize is, is if we use the term gravity uh, versus a force, we're thinking about a special kind of force. Gravity is a force that changes based on distance. So if you consider this to be zero distance, when the player is on the object, think of this player as us standing on the Earth, and the green object is the Earth. When we're at sea level, gravity is 1.0. So uh, just one standard gravity for Earth. However, if we, uh, I'm going to jump and pause here. At this point, if we jumped miles high, obviously, <laughs> the Earth would no longer be pulling on our bodies with a 1.0 gravity. Gravity has diminished by the square of the distance between our physical center and the Earth's physical center. So, in a nutshell, the further away you get from an attracting body, the lower the force that gravity has on the body that is, it is attracting. They're both attracting each other, but if we simplify it and say that the green object is pulling on the white object, out here, if we're talking about gravity, the force is less than when we get right up next to the green object. Okay? So, bearing that in mind, Originally, when I was going to make this example, I was going to embed that concept into gravity, into our personal gravity. But then I realized, after I did the demo, that I didn't need to. So, uh, we can take a vote after I finish this, discussing this, but I might throw in a feature where people can see the difference and how it feels with, with a gravity that diminishes versus a gravity that is always consistently one force. Uh, okay, so the next step here is is I subtract, I create a vector by subtracting the position of the player from the position of the object that I'm trying to attract my player to. Then I take that vector and I convert it into a unit vector, so it's one in length. And the reason this I need to do this is because I want to take the vector that was say, saying basically it points it's a vector, how do I demonstrate this? Hopefully people understand what I mean when I say vector, but think of it as an arrow. There's an arrow pointing from the center of this body in the direction of the thing I want to be attracted to. This step here, line 134, I basically did a calculation that gave me that arrow. It's an X and Y um, pair that describes both uh, direction and um, an amplitude or magnitude. But because I want to control the strength of the force, I need to get rid of the magnitude part. And so what I do is what's in math called uh, normalizing. I normalize the vector. And, and what, what that means is I take the vector, no matter how long it is, 100, 500, and I keep the part that tells me what direction it's pointing in but I change the vector so that it is a unit. It's a unit length. It's, its length is 1. So in other words, I can take that, its length is 1, and I know what direction it's pointing in, and then I can later use that information to turn it into a force vector by applying a magnitude. So 
if I want to push this object over here at 100 something, 100 gravities, let's call it, I would take a unit length vector and I would scale it by a 100 and then it would be pushing my object with a 100 length vector in this direction. 